the palms, the sand, the soft breeze, they seem endless in Ghana's Cape Coast. Yet all are rarely explored by people outside Ghana. In fishing towns like Elmina, we saw the same scenes that have played out for decades, Ghanaians scraping together a meager living. And yet some hope is on the horizon, and it comes from one of the darkest chapters in African history. So they would keep the females in this dungeon? Yes, this was purposely for the women and children. It was designed to took about uh, between 500 and 800 oh. women and children. And uh, they lived here almost in the same conditions as the men. Right? Probably the only thing different here probably was the door behind you. Kwesi Iso Blankson marks this moment with reverence as he goes on to explain the inhumane conditions. Slaves living on little food, water or air, eating, sleeping, defecating side by side in suffocating conditions. Blankson is a senior educator here. And what is that door? That was uh, through that door, uh, soldiers and officials came in to select the women. They washed them and abused them. Rape them? Yes, rape them. And after they brought them back. The children and the women? Yes. And this went on every day? This went on every day. Cape Coast Castle was once the most active slave trading hub in West Africa. For nearly four centuries, millions of Africans were captured like animals and shipped across the Atlantic to a future they could never imagine. So, Blankson, they, they would be spending up to three months in yes, the dungeon, and, the and then when they came out? The door of no return. If you qualify to go through this, you'd never come back. But their direct descendants, known as Roots Tourism, thousands from the U.S. and around the world are taking in the horror and what it means for their shared family history. Monique Ross and Jacques Wallace are here from New York. It's a little devastating at first, but um, it's good to know the history of what has happened and how to kind of connect, you know, your historical past with things that has happened. U.S. President Barack Obama made the emotional pilgrimage in 2009, and Blankson was his guide. What was his reaction to what you told him? Um, surprise, shock. Um, sad uh, and also uh, motivated. Motivated? Yes, yes, because if um, blacks survived the ordeals they went through this, then it's a survival for human uh, beings. It shows that we have a high survival instinct and that has gone to help rejuvenate the town, the community. That this castle of death could now be a lifeline for Cape Coast is no small irony. The American poet Maya Angelou writes that it is a historical truth. No man can know where he's going unless he knows exactly where he's been. Paul Newton, CNN, Cape Coast, Ghana.